welcome to the Shiny Bees podcast, a podcast for those who like their knitting, comedy and yarn in equally large measures. I'm your host, Jo Milmine, and this is episode 109, Hidden Heels, an interview with Mitch of Surfing Ducks. I feel a need to laugh again with you, if that's all right. Hello, hello, and welcome in to another episode of the podcast. Hello, how are you? I hope you've been well since last time I saw you, spoke to you about speckled yarn, and I will have an update on the speckled yarn. Saga. Um, it's not, not a bad way, it's it's quite funny, Um, but um, I've had some feedback from people and I'll, I'll update you on that in the next episode most likely but today I have an interview for you. I have some quick bits of news first uh, before we get underway with that interview and um, mostly involving somewhere you can come see me in in real life, maybe even touch me, not inappropriately, in a friendly way and um, uh, before we get into the interview. So the interview I'm very excited about it is with Mitch of Surfing Ducks. She designs the coolest sock patterns um hashtag hidden heels and they're all about this kind of subversive idea of having these heels that no one knows about that have these different patterns in they're super cool and I've talked about her stuff before on social media in particular and shared pictures of these because I just think they're really clever it's a really cool idea and I just like the idea of being like a staid banker wanker and having these really awesome socks on underneath your grey suit so that was a really fun conversation. I know Mitch quite well, so it does get a qu- a quite jokey and uh, jovial and funny in places. And I hope that you will enjoy that. But before we hop into that, I just want to let you know about somewhere that I'm going to be. I am going to be at Woolen in Dublin next month, the 25th to the 27th of May. I have been roped in a little bit by a certain faux as- aristocracy member. Um, and I'll let you look at the guest list um, of exhibitors for Woolen for that. But I'll give you two guesses, episode one or seven. And who's your hand do I only knit with these days? And um, I'm going to be going over there. I'm going to be covering some of the stuff as part of the podcast. Um, doing some press related type stuff over there. And I'm also probably going to make a couple of cameo appearances on on various uh, stalls doing a little bit of vending <laughs> assistance if you can call it assistance I am a terror and I'm um, going to be over there and I know quite a few people are going now at first I was a bit like mm, I'm, I, you know like, I'm, I can't go to Dublin it's going to be too much hard work blah blah it's like it's so far it's so far it's not far at all is it I mean I used to live in bloody Holly well near Hollyhead it's not far you go there in a day um, and when I looked I only booked my stuff last week and um, when I looked the flights um there's tons of flights and this it cost me like 60 quid for a return flight i can't even get to london for that so i am going i'm going to be flying out on the thursday coming back on the sunday i will be around i am staying near the venue and if you are going i would love to give you a big squishy cuddle and say hello to you because i've not been out and about that much really um for the past year or so in the yarn world and i did do a, a quick one day cameo appearance in edinburgh mostly so i could go to shabin and get a big fat steak and um i am going to be at woolen too so if you're still on the fence i know a lot of people are getting a flight there and back in a day because the venue for this is right next to Dublin airport like it is on the airport pretty much the venue for this so you're not having to fly over and then drag yourself into town it's not going to be some epic job like it would be in London um, or Manchester like the, the event is right there it is right by the airport so you can fly in on the early flight <coughs> right <there. coughs> if you want to oh god I hate that company But I have to fly with them because no one else is going at the right time. And um, you can fly back in a day and it's going to cost you next to nothing, basically. Other than, you know, submitting your kind of business morals uh, to the great great god, uh, Michael Leary or whatever his name is. I don't like the guy, but I'm going to fly on his plane anyway. And... um, you could do that too because as like I said I booked my tickets last week and it was still cheap as chips and super easy to do to just pop in and out for a day because you are right there you're right at the airport there's no big transit time so it's the 25th uh, to the 27th that it is on uh, 25th and 26th of the marketplace 27th is a day of workshops and there are still some workshops available from some pretty cool people I've got to say I was quite impressed by the workshop lineup I don't really do workshops um 
at events because I just want to go and talk to everyone and nosy around. But uh, there are some big names there. Some of them are sold out, unfortunately, like the ever popular Nathan Taylor, Mr. Sockmatician. We do love him. Um, in fact, he does have, in fact, I'm lying to you, he does have one on Friday that is available. But you've got people like uh, Carrie Westerman, Wooly Wormhead, um, Justina Lokoska, who's been on the podcast, has as has Carrie, as has Wooly. Isabel Kramer, who's not, I should go hunt her down, and Nathan. Taylor, Nancy Marchant, uh, Louisa Harding, Aife Nee. So if you're a big um, crochet person, you'll know her. She does Tunisian crochet. My friend Sal loves her. And Kate Davis is doing a talk as well, Carol Feller. So some pretty big names there on the workshop front as well. And on the exhibitor front, I've got to say, um, some pretty decent names, including the wonderful, the enigmatic uh, Countess Blaze doing her first ever show. Yes, in real life. So she will be there too, as will some other um, of our favourites, including the little grey girl who's also been on the podcast before. So I'm a little bit excited, as you can probably tell, about that. Let me know if you're going to be going. You can find everything you need to know about that at woolen.com. That's double O double L I double N. W double O double L I double N dot com. Wow. Could have picked an easy word to say. So yeah, and that's all the news I've got for you today. So on this very high energy note, before they start with the pneumatic drill again outside, my studio come spare room, I would love to get you into the interview. So here is Mitch. So I am delighted to be welcoming today Mitch from Surfing Ducks onto the show. How are you, Mitch? I'm fine. And how are you? I am epic, my friend. Thank you so much for asking. So I'm super excited because um, I really love your hidden heels patterns, basically, which is why I've asked you to come on to the show today. Because from when I very first saw them, your um, it was a skull design and Day of the Dead. From when I very first saw that, I was just like, I can totally see this work and I can see me making them. I can see everyone loving them. And I wanted to share them with, with all of my audience, Cause the Race. And um, also just hear like your story about them and how you came to be designing and, and working on them. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your background um, so we can kind of get to know you. Okay, um, so I, a few years ago, had an online yarn store. Um, I was living in Lyme Regis, and I started to hand dye my own yarn and decided I really loved that. And then due to a number of reasons, I ended up coming back to London. And um, I started doing a bit of design on the side, and I sort of designed some things. And then um, I was listening to your podcast, and um, you were talking to Lindsay, um, Countess Blaze, and she was um, dyeing the mocha f- frappuccino. Orange, orange mocha frappuccino. That's the one that I can never say. And I bought some and I got it and it sat on the side and I just kept on looking at it thinking, I want to make something really nice for this. I don't want it just to be, you know, knitted up into a shawl or something. And I wanted to sort of show it really well. So I started playing around with swatches, which is when I came up with a skull. So I knitted it all. And I really loved it, but I didn't. Most of my friends aren't into knitting, so I didn't know what to do with it. So I showed you, <laughs> and you were the third person who'd seen it. And I was like, "Oh, do you think? Do you think anyone else would want to do this?" And uh, yeah, from that, I designed that. And then I had other designs that I'd already done, but I'd been a bit scared to show people. So it's slowly now rolled out since then. And uh, yes, I now release a sock pattern probably about every two months. They're so cool. Um, Thank you. I know. I mean, it's just been a little bit kind of not like up myself because I'm not up myself, obviously. Um, but obviously, me and Lindsay had made this yarn together, and it's the first time I've I've like dyed yarn properly with someone and made something, and that was a really fun interview. It was a really fun experience, um, and then you'd taken it and made it into something else, and I found that kind of that kind of process where you take someone else's art because hand dyed yarn is that I believe it is that and then people take it and they make it into so many different things and sometimes it's a new thing and you'd taken that and the black parade and you'd made these socks and I was just like hold on a minute that color looks familiar (laughs) yeah and then and then I saw it and I just love the kind of the whole concept the idea behind it um and we were at the retreat actually my retreat 
And the yeah. business retreat when I, f- I first got my little scrubby little mitts on them um, and was playing with them. And I remembered that I was meant to be paying attention because um, we were masterminding. And I was so like transfixed by these socks and thinking about like the marketing and like what how you could put them out there and all the different ideas that I almost had to kind of get myself back in the room. <laughs> Well, you took them off and you went and showed Lindsay without telling me. Yeah, <laughs> I did. Came I... Back and Lindsay was like, oh, I believe you made some socks with my yarn. Yeah, uh, with with her very serious face as well. And you had to sit there and like, yes, miss, I did. <laughs> yes, yes, I did. Yeah, very um, cool. But she, then it still went a full circle because she, because um, the yarn that she did with you was obviously a one-off. So mm-hmm. it was an exclusive limited edition colorway. So when I got um, around to actually launching it, um, she did a brand new colorway for me. So uh, there is a brand new colorway, uh, which is Gols. Gol- Gol- so we're gonna Golosa, have to I think, isn't it? Golosa. That's the one. I think it which is. is um, so I'd, I sent her some pictures that I'd used for inspiration, mm. and she then dyed to those pictures. So it's all like really bright Day of the Dead colors, sort of sugary colors. So, um, yeah, so it sort of came full circle. That was kind of cool. And then I also met um, at your retreat again, I met Leona, who's fluff, uh, who does rusty ferret yarn. And I bought some of hers, which then inspired um, one of my other patterns, which is Hubble Bubble. Cool. Okay, so I've got all over excited about it. And we've uh, we've dived in a little bit into like (laughs) some of the backstory and kind of how it all came crashing together. Um, in a gin-soaked business weekend in Cumbria. It was amazing. Um, But for anyone that's not seen them or anyone that doesn't kind of know what we're talking about, obviously there's some pictures in the show notes. Um, Talk us through the concept of of Hidden Heels and tell us about some of the different designs and why you've decided to pick those out as a thing. Yeah. So Hidden Heels, um, they are... uh, cuff down sock pattern so I, I picked a um, very simple sock pattern and you do um, them top down and the idea is that the on the heel there is a pattern so there's a just on the heel everything else is very simple it's very much tv knitting because I, t- I have a day job and then I come home I'm really tired and I can't be doing the lace socks it's just life's too short and I'll drop the stitches so I wanted something that I could just knit in front of the tv but I had something slightly quirky about it so each one of these um, patterns has a pattern on the heel hence the fact that they're called hidden heels so um there is one that's got an l and an r left and right so you can know which foot you need to put your sock on mm-hmm. and then the one that we were talking about day of the dead um actually has skulls on the heel so it's a black heel and then it's got a very colorful day of the dead style skull and then the next one was called hubble bubble double trouble and that's a bit brighter so that was stripy socks and it's got pump, uh, jack-o'-lanterns, sort mm-hmm. of pumpkins on the heels, and they're different, so they're diff- they're pulling different faces. So the whole idea is that you have this heel that nobody really sees, and only you know about it. And it's sort of a, it's kind of a bit of a secret club. And there's even an inner sanctum secret club that if you're one of the first people to post finished socks, then you get a limited edition badge. I love that. I love the idea of it being like a secret handshake, like a Mason's, but but for socks. It's just so cool. Like you'd have to go to a club and it'd be down a black a- black alley, back alley, <laughs> but it would be very dark. It would be very dark. Yeah. And um, you'd knock on this door that looks like a non-door, but it's a door. And then you like you kind of stick your heel through and you've got to show them your socks to get in. And inside it's like a speakeasy. <laughs> it sounds a bit like that. <laughs> and it would sell lots of gin. Of course, of, of course. course. Maybe yes. a gin urn. Gin urn. <laughs> yes, the famous gin urn. So, um, yeah, so that's what it is. And we've got more patterns coming out. So there's one coming out for Christmas, which is um, a snowflake, which is very beautiful, which I think you've seen as well. So that's quite pretty. Up until now, they're a bit sort of not so sort of more comical and edgy. Mm. And, yeah, we have a whole range that are going to come out, or we, me, <laughs> the whole range that are going to come out next year as well. And um, the feedback on people who have used the patterns is that they're really easy to follow. And people have been concerned that, because it's stranded at the back, but I've kept it really simple. Mm. And also it actually strengthens the heels because you've actually got two layers of wool. So. Ah, so that's really handy. Yeah. 
So, um, yeah, and they, they wear well, so they're good. So it's all very exciting, and it's all been really interesting, the journey of learning how to do patterns and publish on Ravelry and do that sort of thing. Oh, awesome. And I suppose a good thing is, is you don't even, even if you're a beginner to strand in knitting, if you can do socks, and it's a really basic sock pattern, that the challenge yeah. in it is just that heel. Yes. Um, and it's a really small canvas for you to practice on. It is. So it's basically, and if, you, if you're really not sure, you can just practice with scrap yarn because actually it's only 30 um, stitches um, wide by 28 rows. So that's sort of like you know, an hour's knitting and you can practice if you wanted to. But I, everyone I know, my friend had never knitted socks and she's knitted two sets so far. And uh, yeah, so she's very ch chuffed about it. I keep getting um, Instagram pictures of her showing her heels, which is cute. Oh, I love that. I love that this, this subversive idea because I'm a little bit anti-Instagram. I don't think it's a secret. And I love this idea that you're all being really subversive and taking these heel pictures instead of just having like a, a bunch of flowers and some scissors on some wooden bench. Yeah. Oh, it just feels rebellious. I love it. I love I it. do try and do the flower thing occasionally. It never works. So, no, no flowers. It's normally on concrete. There's a couple that look like they're on a beach because I used to live in Lyme Regis and I still really like the beaches. Um, but there aren't any beaches around here, so they're on the um, side of the Thames. So it's the dirty sand on the side of the Thames. I love that. Is it socially acceptable if you're a hidden heels person, if you're in the gang, secret handshake, back door, speak easy? Show your heels. Would it ever be socially acceptable for you to wear Crocs with them? <sighs> I think so. I think so. I mean, a lot of people do get upset about the fact that they've spent time doing the heel and then they cover it up. So, yeah, um, I don't know. I'm still not sure about Crocs. But I've got some um, shoes that are sort of opened up back sandals and I have been known to wear those with them. It's cool. It's all right. Anything goes. See, I can see it with Birkenstocks. Like, I can see you getting away with that. But with Crocs, they are kind of mocked. Not that we want to be rhyming. They, they are kind of like laughed at. Crocs are like a, a fashion faux pas unless you're five. Um, and quite dangerous on escalators, I believe. But <laughs> <laughs> according to all the pictures in China, they're very dangerous on ex escalators. <laughs> to be honest with you, most of China is dangerous. Um, but I wonder whether, you know, like if you are a little bit subversive and you are kind of a little bit quirky and different, whether you'd wear the Crocs as a kind of ironic thing. It's like, I'm so like, I know this is really enough, but I'm going to do it anyway because I want to be ironically cool. I think so. I think you could get away with that. And I reckon if you've got style enough to wear Crocs, you've got style enough to wear Crocs and socks. Socks and a cravat, perhaps. I think that could really finish off the look. Cravat. I was thinking more that they might have a carnation in their pocket, you know, to get yes. into the secret club. I love that. Maybe even a flower that squirts water. Fantastic. There we go. See, now, now we've, we've developed an entire dress code. It could be difficult to get into this club. <laughs> did you ever, when you were younger, tangent alert, um, did you ever, when you were younger, when you went out, if you had friends who went out and they had trainers on and they wouldn't let them in a club, that they used to go and take their trainers off and their socks off and they put their socks over the top of the trainers to give the impression they were actually wearing leather shoes? Did you? Did that ever happen to you? No, but I do remember going round the back and people dropping their proper shoes through the toilet windows at the back and then, then put them on and coming in so you'd sort of share the shoes round. Oh, fancy. I just wonder whether that would be an advertising thing for you. Maybe you could do the, do the whole club thing, um, but instead of it being like an ordinary pair of, um, you know, those two-stripe socks you used to get where they had two coloured yep. bands at the top, they'd just be hidden heels and they'd just rock up with their hidden heels over the top of their like, Nike Air Max. Could do, or just don't wear shoes, just wear your socks. Yeah. Just go clubbing in socks. They might need some kind of Teflon coats in them. Definitely need to be machine washable. You could get some of that glue stuff and put it at the bottom, <gasps> you know, to make it stick. Yeah. You can buy stuff, can't you, that sort of stops you slipping. Mm. <laughs> anyway, anyway, off on a tangent there. I did give the tangent tangent klaxon. Um, you did. Which is good. Uh, so thinking about like your designing then, obviously you've, um, you mentioned at the beginning that it had been a bit of a learning curve. You'd previously owned um, an online wool business, done a bit of hand dyeing, and then you moved into these patterns. What was your kind of starting point to kick you off with designing? And what are some of the best resources you've come across to help you learn? Um, 
what kicked me off was I, I did a very short stint for one of the big online retailers and I was on their help desk and I was the pattern query girl. So everyone used to phone me up going, I don't understand this pattern, I don't understand that pattern. And I learned very quickly about how customers interact with patterns. And you can see how designers think they've got it all right. And then you get a customer who just doesn't understand it. So I started sort of rewriting patterns that had come through mm -hmm. just because we had we needed to get customers up and running. So that's how I started doing it. And then, um, yeah, it just went from there. And uh I use Stitch Mastery for my pattern design, although there is another one online tool called Stitch Fiddler, which also I know I knew you'd love it. <laughs> <laughs> but you can chart out your designs on that, and that's quite cool. So that all works really well, but Excel works very well as well. And, um, yeah, just swatching, actually, sort of trying patterns out. But it's really nice because I've got such a little canvas. I have lots and lots of sort of random ideas. Um, sketching out but I'll sit I often will buy yarn that I really like and then it will just sit on the side and I'll sort of walk past it and stroke it occasionally which is probably a bit odd and then just sort of eventually I'll decide what I'm going to do with it as in the design on the back it'll sort of come to me and I go oh yeah that's what it should be should be so I'm, that makes me sound like I talk to my yarn doesn't it I don't I promise I just keep it in sweet jars you do you do um, <laughs> I remember this about you it's quite fun yes yeah it's it, it's very practical but they're empty sweet jars so it's just all lined up and so you can see what's in there and why where, where you stash so yeah so that's all good in terms of resources then um obviously you talked about you had all of that kind of customer input from the customers end yeah. about what they find difficult about patterns and what they need to have explained um often because it's not clear which is really good information um but how did you literally fig like other than experimentation with a bit of it like how did you get into the when you write a pattern these are the steps that you take type thing where did you get that information from it was just reading other patterns and knitting other patterns and years and years experience um i also um so christine who's winwick mum yeah when it um, yeah i won a competition i knit design competition two years ago with her mm -hmm. so we were both finalists and winners um for different designs or she was a winner for a blog and i was a winner for a design that i'd done and so we met where we had a day at serda and i remember sitting with her and she was so enthusiastic about knitting socks and i was just like mm, yeah don't bother and she's like no 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 and she was, she convinced me and i came back and i knitted a pair of socks as a result of talking to her because she'd been so into it so when i knitted the first pair of socks i must admit i did go all over online looking for resources youtube is still amazing her stuff's amazing as well and just to sort of teach myself the basic sock pattern because the sock patterns there's only about three different ways it's like top down toe up afterthought heel um, so I learned that and then I went from there and just sort of decided to design on the bag and then you learn more and more and more. Um, and yeah, and I'm still learning. I'm still learning about I need to go and learn InDesign to actually write the patterns in because I've been using Canva mm -hmm. and it just doesn't, it's not quite up to it. It's okay for the first couple, but if I'm producing them at the speed that I'm producing, um and uh yeah my tech editor is <laughs> sort of groans and goes no you need to go and learn in design so it's a constant learning process and yeah and even learning how to use Ravelry to publish your patterns and love knitting which is a separate platform for publishing your patterns these are all sort of things that you think you know how to do it and then it suddenly sort of oh oh I didn't realize I'd already published it I thought that was this draft button and that sort of thing Every day's a school day. Oh, one of my favourite sayings. One of my favourite <laughs> sayings. Now it's so cool that you've kind of just taken it and had a conversation, a chance meeting, chance conversation, and then it's turned into what it's turned into. Maybe I need to get her on, Winnick Mum. She's lovely. She's yeah, generally Christine. really, really nice. um, but so me. enthusiastic about knitting socks. Awesome. Yep. I wish I will put her on my list. I think she's already on my list, actually. I've just not emailed all of my list yet. <laughs> but it would be nice to have her on because she's not actually far from me. Um, cause it's funny because oh. everyone calls it Winwick, 
um, and it's actually pronounced Winnick like without the W, like Anik is pronounced Anik without the W, um, but it's really not far from me at all. Um, so it would be kind of cool to um, have a chat to her, get another northerner on here. Yeah, and the background on why she did it and how she started, which was, as I said, she is so enthusiastic about sock knitting. It was really infectious, and it was my lasting memory of that day with coming away from her sort of saying, oh, you know, you must give it a go again. So I did. That and the fact that Serdar has staff there that have worked there for 20 years. Mm. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think she's definitely worth speaking to then because it's just cool that these, like I said, a chance meeting that can spark something yeah. off and you take it and you run with it and you turn it into something really cool. It's not even like it needs to be done right away. It's, this has kind of been a bit of an evolution, really. Yeah, so as I said, I, I, start, I met her, I um, I tried to knit some socks, I really liked it, and then when I bought the sock, the, uh, the yarn that you and Lindsay had done, made, I decided, yep, I definitely want to make socks, but what I didn't want to do was just another plain pair of socks, mm. and that's when I don't know where the Day of the Dead thing came in, but I just decided it needed to be a skull. Yeah, it's very on brand for Lindsay as well, that. It is. It, it is. is. It's kind of clever. So I loved it. I loved it. I'm not even sorry that I wasn't paying attention <laughs> at my own retreat because I was just like transfixed by these socks and, yeah. and how I would market them and what we would do and how cool they were. So awesome. So you mentioned um, briefly, like you work a day job. It's quite demanding. So you need quite easy socks to knit yeah. at night. How have you found the demands of like starting and growing your pattern business Um balanced off against your day job it's tough I try to be quite disciplined I try to come home so I start work really early um, and then sort of come home sort of more normal time and then I try to work on my business until about seven thirty-eight at night but I do try and get to the gym as well. So sort of trying to get, get to the gym and then I'm trying to do that till seven, eight, eight o'clock at night. And then I try and sort of say, right, that's it. So it's probably about two hours at night. And then at the weekends, um, I usually spend about half a day and then I try and just say, no, you've got to take time for yourself. Otherwise you just get too engrossed. But some of it, I love the knitting bit. And that's not really... I don't want that to become a chore. Mm. But actually, I really like the designing bit as well. It's just some of the stuff behind it that you get sort of like, it just sucks your time. But it's worth it. And I do genuinely think that if I put the effort in now, it makes it easier. Each time I do it, it becomes easier and easier because you've actually put the, the groundwork in and the base in and you've made sure that you've got checklists and you know what you're doing and that sort of thing. So, um, yes. Short-term pain for long-term gain. And what ambitions do you have? We're talking about long-term gain there. So there must be one. Uh, what What <laughs> is your ambition? What's your vision for this project? Um, well, I've got loads of ideas still for the socks. So I'd like to carry on doing the socks. I've got loads of sort of ideas and ideas for doing stuff in the summer and that sort of thing. Um, I think I might do an e-book as well. Um, so sort of maybe an annual ebook of all the sock patterns so they'll come out that way but um, I'd start like, I'd like to start teaching sock knitting as well because I think I think it's something the world should all do so <laughs> I'd like to go out and start teaching patterns and I've also got a couple of um, friends and groups that so I knit I do teach one group already and they've asked me to do a limited edition design for them so only they will get it. So that's quite interesting as well. So that's a nice little tangent to go down. I love that. It plays back into your kind of secret knock, limited edition, yeah. secret club brand as well. That's yeah. a truly beautiful thing. And I love how you're taking, because you have got teaching experience, taking that and, and pairing it up with something that you've learned from new, from someone who is super enthusiastic, like so many of us do. They see someone who's really enthusiastic about something on social media or on a podcast, and we try it, and then it becomes our new favourite things. So I think it's a really cool, almost full circle thing for you to then go and teach other people that too. It's ace. Yeah. Yeah, so no, so it's quite cool. And as I said, I have been, I have done some teaching already, and I've done some. I've already taught people how to knit socks. So the next step is um, doing the sort of limited edition ones for special groups. So that's cool. But we have loads more patterns. I'm really, I can't say what the patterns are, but I'm really excited about some of the patterns that are going to come up. 
pretty soon so they're all sort of quite cool and each pattern also I try and introduce one new thing so it might be a different way of casting on or it might be that um, so the one that's out at the moment Hubble Bubble Double Trouble has got um, uh, stripes so that's just a slightly different technique it's only one thing that you do different than you're normally doing but you just learn more and more as you go along but um, they shouldn't be complicated. Knitting shouldn't be difficult. No, definitely. And um, like you say, if you're coming home at the end of a busy day or if your kids have been pecking your head all day or whatever else, what you want is just be able to pick something up and go, I just fancy a knit and I don't want to think. Yeah. And I've got a lot of friends who knit them while they're commuting as well. So mm. it's that sort of, the socks are such an easy thing to pack up into your bag and sort of have on the go. But um, yeah, they're sort of nice and easy nice and relaxing epic so do you think you would ever branch out from the socks into other knitted stuff or is this going to be your focus what you are known for I think this is going to be my focus at the moment but um yeah you, I still look at other things I mean you just look at things and think oh so I love punch ponchos at the moment and um <laughs> I was I not love- expecting you to say that did you not? No. Nothing. I love a good poncho, I do. <laughs> but, but I don't have any of the designs out there. So I was on a knitting retreat last week when I was meant to be doing these like squares. I spent most of the time with the tutor working out my next poncho design. So that might turn out to be a pattern. I love that. Do you know what? You can have this one for free. It just came to me when I was not thinking about wearing a poncho ever <laughs> because I'm five foot three and I would I would I would look like literally like one of the um you know the aliens on Pac Man, the ghosts that float around and come and try and kill you. I would look like one of those the poncho on. I'm shorter than you. No I'm, way are you smaller than yeah, me. I am, I'm five two and a half. <laughs> that half makes a difference it does it, do, it does when you've not got that many halves <laughs> it does make a difference yeah yeah no i'm only five two and a half i don't care love a poncho no i can't i can't do the whole ghost thing um but i had an idea while you were talking about that yeah of something i could do because i'm re-knitting lush at the moment as as you know we, we spoke about this briefly before we started chatting um but I, what i would really like is you know you have hidden heels yeah. Right. And I have a geography degree. I'm a geographer, right? And what everybody knows about geographers is that we like elbow patches. <laughs> hidden it's elbow patches. Not hidden, out and proud. And I would like, if you could do this for me, I'd be appreciative. Um, I know I'm just putting my wish list on, you know, when you're really busy. <laughs> You've just told us you're really busy with your day job. Um, but I, what I would like is for there to be like a jumper pattern with the elbows on there, the elbow patches, perhaps with globes on them. Maybe even go two colour, so I could have a full-on globe. What do I need to actually do the jumper pattern, or can I not just do the patches? Well, do you know what? You could do the patches. I could sew them onto my Lush cardigan, couldn't yeah. I? You could, you could do them everywhere. We could even do them with Velcro, and then you could just move them around your jumpers. Amazing. See, the, the, this is why we're friends, you see. It gets out of hand so quickly, so quickly. If anyone copies this, this is copyrighted, right? If I see anyone doing this before she does it, there's going to be trouble. I will hunt right. you down personally. You can hear my keyboard clicking and get into the patent office already. She is. She's there all over it. It'd be cool. It'd be cool because you could have school ones. Like, you know, if you wanted tattoos, like, you know, you get tattoos and they have those big stars on oh, their elbows. Yeah. It'd be like that. Because I'm scared yeah. of needles, so I don't have any tattoos whatsoever or any piercings apart from my ears. That's it, nothing. Mm. But I could be that person with the elbow, like the star elbows. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I Anchors as well. I can oh, see. Yes. Oh. They'd be like yeah. tattoos. Knitted yeah. stick-on tattoos. Oh, yes. We shouldn't have yeah, had this conversation this... on air. Like, that we, we, this could be an entire new collection. You need to cut this. You need to cut this bit of it. <laughs> I know, but it's really funny. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, we could do. Yeah, you could do them further up the arm as well. Totally. Yeah. Would be amazing. Mm. You could machine knit them and like sell them as patches full on. Like you know how air we buy. Like I might actually cut this out. You know how air we buy patches with their names on for the flying suit. Yes. Like that, but you can put them all <laughs> over your knitwear. Yeah, in, uh, I, yeah, I can see medals, I can see names, I can see, yeah, the whole lot. But I think the tattoo idea, we could work with the tattoo idea. Oh, we could do we a, could a, tra- do... a tramp, stra- a sta- ta- I'm so excited, I can't get down. <laughs> a, 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 a tramp 
stamp one, you know, so you could just yeah. stick it on the bottom of your back, like if you never had one. Oh, yeah, the back of your lash card again, and you can put a stamp on the back. That would be amazing. So <laughs> subversive. So subversive. Oh, I can see a swatch happening before I go to bed tonight. No, I am. I'm. I'm. i literally. I'm gonna to have to cut that bit out. I think because it's too good. It's too good, and it might become a thing. It might <laughs> become a thing, and I don't want anyone to go copy it and um and steal it. I'm a ma- in my massive listenership. <laughs> so, oh, brilliant. Um, I can't remember what we were talking about when we got into that. I don't know, but my mind's now all over the place. I'm thinking, oh, yeah, no, carry on. I can't. Next question. <laughs> what were we talking about? We were talking about. I, we were talking about out. where I branching out where I might go next, and I was trying to be all sensible and talk about teaching, and instead we got to tramp stamps. We did. We did via the medium of um, knitted arm patches. We could do the arm patches and cut it after that, because <laughs> the genius really happens after that. It does, obviously. Okay. Um. Cool. Okay. So I'm trying to think how we get them from arm patches. <laughs> um. So have you had, I mean, I know it's a pretty ridiculous request, um, but have you had anyone else, I know you've had this special request from the knitting group that you've taught, have you had anyone else ask you for any random patterns yet that they, they want? Have the, have, have the people started to demand patterns? Well, apart from the glow in the dark part of some a male, uh, how, how much swearing, can, I know you two are, you can swear quite a lot, the uh, glow in the dark penises on the Penis. heels. Penis is not a swear word. That's clean yeah, on. No. It's, it's a part of the anatomy. It's part of the anatomy. Someone did talk about um, recently. We could do glow in the dark ones of those on the mm-hmm. heels that would just light up at night. So that that was something about a whole range of like really hidden hidden heels. So either using glow in the dark yarn or using the UV one, which sort of uh, you have to put a special light over that and just put lots of things boobs. All sorts of things. That would be so much fun. <laughs> that hidden but then, nail squared. Yes. <laughs> but I, I, I think that would ha- then have to go into other things. You'd have to have lots of hidden patterns on lots of things. You I could sort. So, um, yeah, so, no, so I've had those requests. And, yeah, apart from that, yeah, it's more these sort of like little groups that have come up saying, oh, we've got a group. Would you mind doing this one for us? But I can't really tell you who the groups are because that would take away the hiddenness of it. Well, it is all subversive and secret, handshakes. It is. Doors. It is. doors. I don't want to say clogs, but what I meant was Crocs. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the Amsterdam chapter, but, you know, they're more of the clogs. I love it. So cool. So cool. Um, awesome. So, thinking about kind of everyone that's listening now who all wants one of these patterns. Like, I don't know, you cannot want one after this this episode, frankly. Um, where is the best place for people to come find you and check out all of the hidden heels? Um, you can find me on Instagram, but the best place to go to is my website, which is surfingducks.com. And if you sign up to the newsletter... Um, there are regular newsletters and often you get discounts and pre-warning of patterns that are coming out. Um, I sell on Ravelry and I do sell a bit on Love Knitting, but I'm, most of my sales go through Ravelry. So, yeah, those are the places, but the newsletter is the best option. Lovely, because we're, it's a secret club. So think about it, people. Like on brand is to have secret stuff in the secret newsletter. Yeah, you know there could, there could be dress code changes if you want to get into the speakeasy you're going to need to be on there frankly so <laughs> the latest latest drinks that are available latest patterns and uh, yeah and they are pre-released they, we are going to start trying to pre-release them early through those so if you want to get the secret badge because you have to be one of the first people to post you'll get a bit of advance notice so you'll be ahead of the game to be able to get the pattern knitted up to get the badge I want all the badges. Not all the badges. All the badges, yeah. Awesome. Well, I'll put full links to all of that in the show notes as well. So don't panic if um, you didn't get all of that down. They will be in the show notes as well. As long as, along with our orange, maca, orange mocha frapper chino socks, the Day of the Dead ones, so you can yeah. see those in the yarn. And beautiful. So if anyone's got any yarn left, uh, I don't know how many people have got skeins of that left. It is the perfect pattern for it. Super. I love that. Okay. Well, um, not Jess. Mitch. I don't know where I got <laughs> Jess from. 
<laughs> that's my alter ego. Maybe, that's my... maybe, maybe that's your uh, speakeasy name. Um, thank you, Mitch, so much for coming on and telling us all about yourself and your designs. It's been really good fun having you on here. Thank you. It's lovely talking to you. So there you have it, my friends. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, that interview was um, just as funny, if not funnier, editing it than it was at the time um, that I recorded that. Because it is a little bit um, of an older episode. Not an episode, like a recording. It was done before Christmas. I batched a lot of interviews before Christmas and then didn't get to... Uh, editing them but now I have and they've, they've almost got better with age a little bit like decent wine and uh, I really enjoyed um, editing that back and I'm excited to be sharing that with you today so I hope you enjoyed the show if you want to get in touch with me you can do just email me info at shinybees.com or you can get me on any of the usual socials and don't forget we're always chatting mucking about and having a general good um jolly time over in the facebook group it's facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash shiny bees podcast community if you want to come join us there i am considering posting some of the episodes back on ravelry again i'm a little bit in two minds about facebook at the moment as i know a lot of other people are and um, but trying to find a home for the podcast for us all to chat and get together and have a laugh and mostly for you to share your funny knitting patterns with me because that is the highlight of my week i'm not gonna lie um but until then we'll be over in the facebook group so i hope you have a wonderful weekend my friends Happy knitting and I will speak to you all again soon. Cheers. You've been listening to the Shiny Bees podcast. Show notes for this episode with all the links and resources that are mentioned can be found at shinybees.com forward slash 109. Be sure to come and follow all the news from the podcast over on social media. I'm on pretty much everything as at shinybees. Cheers! I feel a need to laugh again with you If that's alright